If you look forward to the Israel Adesanya vs Paulo Costa fight, then be sure to show this by smashing the like button. Welcome everybody to Keenan K TV. In today's video, we will be going over the Israel Adesanya vs Paula Costa fight. But mainly in this episode, focus on why Paula Costa will be able to beat Adesanya. I will also make another video where I talk about why Adesanya can win. So be sure to like and subscribe to my channel with the bell notifications turned on. And now with that being said, let's jump right into the video. When it comes to Paulo Costa, immediately what sticks out is his size. Phenomenal for the weight division, he is just going to have this significant strength advantage physically over Israel Adesani as he has had over all of his opponents, perhaps excluding a fighter like Yoel Romero. But with that said, when it comes to the fight, how will it have an effect? In what way will Adesanya's success be hindered by this? Now Adesanya, when it comes to physical power, strength, physicality, he's not known for that. And obviously when you look at him, a fighter who was 6 foot 4 with an 80 inch reach fighting at the middleweight division is not going to be the biggest in terms of muscle mass, just pure physicality. It's not going to be like that. And his fighting style just proves that completely. He's always on the outside, moving, using his reach advantage, height advantage to the maximum, and just picks at his opponents from afar where he can connect with the strikes and the opponents are just simply out of reach. And usually that is where the opponent gets neutralized because they can't get in, they can't hit, and they just keep on getting hit. And because of that, a lot of doubt starts to set in and a lot of mistakes start to occur that Israel Adesanya can capitalize on and just finish the job with. We have seen this with Robert Whitaker who couldn't close in the range, got countered, got finished. Derek Brunson couldn't get in range, got countered and got finished. But the problem with all of these fighters is that they all try to rush in and once they tried to rush in, their job was done. They wouldn't know what to do next. Let's take his toughest fight for example, Calvin Gastelum. Calvin Gastelum had tremendous success throwing the jab and connecting. Predominantly, that was all the best clean, significant work that he did that you can really rely on. Sure, he was able to rock him in the first round and he was able to stun him as well with a head kick, but other than that, the consistency was that jab. And you could clearly see it on Israel Adesanya's face. The left side of his face, which was obviously the side that Calvin Gastelum was jabbing, was the part that was swollen the most. But moving on from the jab, Calvin Gastelum would follow it up with one big left hand and everything would end there, right? There was nothing really that Calvin Gastelum could do that was consistently on the front foot while backing up Adesanya, while hitting, while connecting, that seriously endangered Adesanya. Let's take this sequence for example, right? Finally, he's got Adesanya pinned up against the fence. Now, when it comes to Calvin Gastelum's fighting style, he's not really known to tee off on opponents up against the fence. And when he finally got him somewhere where he can hit him, it wasn't really where he kind of wanted him to be. He just wanted to be in boxing range, not necessarily where he has him pinned up against the fence. And automatically, he doesn't really know how to follow everything up because he's predominantly a one-two hitter quitter. That's really what it is and right now you will see him boom shoot him for the takedown and why is that really if you can only imagine Paulo Costa being in that scenario that is really when Paulo Costa just gets his rhythm going that is really when he starts to warm up and start to connect with the shots that he wants to connect with contrary to Calvin Gastelum he's not really going to start hitting with anything clean so that is where the size will come into play because from that moment on you will try and see Israel Adesanya fight back keep distance but the main problem with this distance management for Adesanya is that a lot of people respect the range that was really the big thing with Adesanya and usually when Adesanya wants to demand respect he tries to kick the body for example right that is what he did against Calvin Gastelum. he was really going to the body a lot and when it comes to his boxing he doesn't really chain up a lot of these shots to where they are too worried once they get into the boxing range because it's either one big shot at a time without Adesanya or nothing.
So against all of these guys like Whitaker, Calvin, or even like Romero, where you just don't engage with the range at all, he's able to keep that distance. But Paulo Costa, he will enter that range. He will eat shots. He is willing to eat shots. I mean, what's all that size good for anyway if you're not going to absorb a couple strikes that other people cannot? So he will do that. He will rush forward. He will get in range. And immediately, Adesanya will have to work off of defense. Even though he likes to have his opponents come in on him, it, it is not quite the come in style that Adesanya favors. You know, usually it's these big exploding shots that come one shot at a time that Adesanya likes to fight against. But against a fighter like Paulo Costa, who doesn't throw one big shot at a time, who actually throws a lot of shots that are hard at the same time, that will give him a lot of trouble. So as soon as he comes forward and Adesanya is moving back and tries to kick at the body of uh, Paulo Costa, whatever it may be, you will see that immediately Paulo Costa will smother the work. And as soon as he has Adesanya pinned up against the fence, that is when you will see the body work start to catch up with Adesanya because Paulo Costa, most of the damage that he gets comes from the body. So when he's fighting somebody like Adesanya who is ready to go five rounds, that is the best thing Paulo can do. Go to the body and decrease the stamina of Adesanya. And so a lot of the success Paulo can get has to come early on in the fight. It doesn't necessarily mean that after the first two rounds he's going to gas out. It all solely depends on how he wants to put out the output because when it comes to Adesanya, even though he likes to control the distance, to control the tempo, whatever it may be, he's not going to force you to throw more than you want. Prime example was his fight with Yoel Romero. So if Paulo Costa decides to fight less hard and a little bit more in spurts, that will help his stamina and his endurance come fight night. But the most important part of it all will come down to his kicking game. Even though we all like to praise Adesanya, we cannot really overlook what Paulo Costa is all about. With tremendous leg kicks and body kicks coming from those big legs that he has, they will automatically carry a lot of power with them. And so the biggest danger for Paulo Costa lies in that first initial closing the gap phase when he's trying to come in on Adesanya. For example, when Paulo Costa fought against Uriah Hall, Uriah Hall was tremendous with his jab. He was consistently popping it and really damaging the nose of Paulo Costa and really hurting his progress of actually getting close and really starting to get his own work in. So it really comes down to the jab, which will be the most problematic thing for Paulo Costa facing Adesanya. With obviously being 6 foot 4, 80 inch reach and all that range that he has, it will be very difficult for him to just walk in recklessly. Even though that is probably what he has to do come fight night, minimizing all of that will be the most important part of Paulo Costa's game. And one way to do this will immediately come down to the leg kicks and the body kicks. By utilizing those first and putting Adesanya on defense mode, that will take away the initial pumping jab that Uriah Hall, for example, had against Paulo Costa. And really comparing Uriah Hall's jab with Adesanya's, Adesanya is a lot more faint heavy, whereas Uriah Hall is a lot more keen on throwing clean shots that will really just hurt you. And so I don't really immediately see Adesanya pumping the jab just the same way that Uriah Hall did because they are not the same fighters. Even though I would give the jab advantage to Uriah Hall over Adesanya, but there is one really specific area I would have to give Adesanya the clear advantage to is obviously the outside momentum footwork defense. Adesanya is very clean when it comes to just moving away and you know getting out of range. So where you had for example Uriah Hall being a stationary target for the most part, you will have Adesanya who is a lot more keen on moving. So it is really about what different methods as well as Sanya will use. Will he utilize the movements that Uriah Hall had where he kind of was a lot more firm on his feet trying to not give up as much space to Paulo Costa to where Paulo can then enter and then you know, press you up against the fence? Or will Adesanya be completely avoiding it which will in return lower his output and lower the amount of work that he can put up against Paulo Costa? So these are all the different approaches that Israel Adesanya can take but the most important approach for him will always be what he does best and that will come down to fainting, keeping control, long kicks and avoid being in a brawl. But how long can you do that against somebody who was as powerful, strong, and as determined as Paulo Costa? Because as soon as Paulo Costa can make Adesanya feel his power, Adesanya, I'm sure of it, will fight a lot different than what he usually does against most of these middleweights. And so we are left with a fight that is not your usual middleweight going up against Adesanya. He's a lot more powerful, Paulo Costa, a lot more dangerous, a lot more determined, and a lot more able to take damage. Whereas most of these opponents may back off when they get hit with a body kick or a jab or a straight from Adesanya. 
Anya. I'm sure of it that Paula Costa will not be discouraged and will just go through them. And that is where a close range battle can occur and that is exactly where Paula Costa gets a lot of success from. If he can connect with a couple good body shots, I am sure that he will be able to slow down Israel Adesanya, make him stationary and from there a lot of good work can be put forth from Paula Costa. And it will only probably take so many shots before he can get a significant strike in that will hurt Adesanya and from there he can probably finish him. But this was only why Paula Costa can beat Israel Adesanya because it will only be time that will reveal the truth. For now, I've been Keenan from Keenan KTV, signing off, later.